Well, here we are, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Charlie, November Juliet 7 Victor, and uh, we are here to do another uh, kit build with Rex uh, W1REX and Steven N1SH. So uh, we are going to turn the uh, mic over to them, but I just wanted to welcome everybody to the channel again. How this works uh, while Steven or Rex gets unmuted, how, how this works is, uh, is Rex comes up with a project and he uh, uh, comes up with the idea and then he sends out the kit and he, uh, what he does is he, he uh, uh, sets up all the, the lecture and everything. And so what we're gonna do is build one. Uh, we need Steve to unmute though, so that, uh, so that we can hear Rex. So there we go. Okay. Rex, back over there? you. Yes. Can everybody hear me? Okay. All right. Well, um, good evening again. We got uh, Billathon, live, live stream Billathon number two. Um, uh, I uh, thank you everybody for participating, uh, whoever's out there. Uh, I think we got about 18 so far and people coming on board. Anyway, um, you know, I, I want to say one thing is the fact that, I mean, this is not an exercise to build something, to build a kit, let's say. This is an exercise to impart information, to experiences and whatnot, to to, to learn the fine art of building. The object is not to just build this kit. The object is to learn something new about uh, building. So um, so this kit is relatively simple. And you know, I didn't want to take a long time to, to uh, you know, the last one was what, over three days because it was very intense. We did a lot of theory, then we built it, and then we did debugging. This one, we're just going to try to do building uh, with a few extemporaneous uh, tips along the way um, to, to just give you more experience. Okay. Right. And hey, Rex, do you have any more coming out? Uh, do you have, do you know yet what, what the next one's going to be by the oh, way? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. You might be... out now. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I hope here's the thing. Uh, when I got into the hobby, I mean, in 1995, I mean, QRP was still, you know, it was 20, 30 years old then okay and i've been at it for 25 years but there were some very classic kits back in the 70s um being one being the tuna tin 2 which happened to be you know my love uh yeah, i love that kit i love the design i love the simplicity of it i i just like the idea of taking something uh, that you can go down to the grocery store and you you know you have your lunch and now you got a chassis and you can build something cool in it and it looks nice um but they had um in May of 1976, it was the Tuna Tin 2 was the feature article, the construction article in QST. And that was because, now remind, uh, remember that QST and the ARRL is not a real big uh, purveyor of QRP ideas. They don't even have a QRP column in the magazine, okay? I mean, but it just so happens that W1CER, uh, Doug DeMaw, was a QRP guy. And he also ran the lab. So when he made the construction article for the tuna tin, that sort of set off a firestorm. Right after that came um, the CB, uh, CB slider, which was in a spam can. And that was a VFO for the tuna tin. Then came out, I believe it was the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the hearing aid five, which is in a kipper snack. And that was a receiver. Okay, so now you had a, a transmitter, a VFO, and a receiver, and then came out the sardine sender. And when I first got in the hobby, I wanted to, you know, my idea, my grand idea was to take and make a new version of the sardine sender and put all the stuff, all the parts inside a sardine can. Because I'm from Maine, and we were the heart of the, of the sardine canning business at one time. Um, and as a kid, I used to, uh, we lived right on the ocean. And every once in a while in a big storm, I could walk down on the beach and I'd find hundreds of empty sardine cans, all sealed up, all floating in on the tide, on a storm tide. And I collected them all up. I opened them up and I made this little wooden thing and I had these little shelves and I stripped TV sets for parts and I put the parts in the tuna fish, uh, the sardine cans. So, stop looking at that. Huh? Stop looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got caught. I'm sorry. Okay, I got to look at that camera over there. So, so uh, you know, I just I just had a love for sardines. Well, I've come to find out, I, I spent years trying to figure out how to do it. And I finally managed to talk to a guy who owned the last remaining sardine canning company in Maine. And he finally gave me permission to go in the plant when they're on break, shutdown, 
and can some kits. But that meant I had to make like a thousand kits in, in a few days, which means I had to buy a thousand kits worth of parts. And I sat down and holy crap, that's going to cost me 10 grand. <laughs> I didn't have that kind of money. So I never had that happen. Uh, that never happened. So, um, but I do love the sardine sender and I'm going to work on that. So uh, I I'll give a, uh, so as you can see here, whoops, right there, there's Beach Cliff sardines, not made in Maine. Um, and it's, it's a cool can. I'm going to be working on this, a sardine sender, but not the sardine sender that came out way back then because that was an 80 meter transmitter. Uh, here's the, the new herring. This is a Kippard's herring snacks, but you know, that's a nice can too, but it's not very pretty. I mean, it's kind of ugly. It's, whoops, right there. So it's just a silver can. There's no, and I don't think I can make a really nice label for that. So I'm not totally enthusiastic about that. But then again, I like this one. Let's see, which which camera am I on? Whoops, I'm upside down. Cento, this is anchovies. That's a beautiful can. I just love this can. I mean, it's nice, bright yellow and red, with some nice labels on it. So I'm working on this one. This is probably going to be the heart of my next Billathon kit. Anyway, I'll put that aside. So, yeah, I'm working on it. Uh, okay. I, I just wanted to ask, just so that people knew that, hey, this is a series. This is, this now, this is, is ongoing. A series, and uh, I hope to have maybe five over the course of this year. Okay. Let me talk about... Um, uh, let's see, the last time when we had the tuna tin, uh, one of the problems we had, we built for the troubleshooting was the RF probe. And I happen to have in my little portable thing, my, my portable, um, uh, parts toolbox. I'm going to reach over there. I don't know if I actually showed it, but this is my, my toolbox. Uh, and that should have... <laughs> Rex the on the top and then lunatic probably. Uh, but see, this is really all you really need to build is in there. Okay. Um, so you don't need a lot of parts. And one of the things that, that you do need, obviously, is a little small meter. I have a very large meter, but this is a smaller meter, but it's an auto ranger, which means when you go to read volts, let's say, it automatically tries to, if it doesn't see anything, it goes down to millivolts and microvolts, all, all that kind of shit. And it gave us no end to trying to read stuff off of an RF probe. I don't like auto ranging uh, meters. And so I searched around and I found this guy here, I just bought to replace that guy. It's not too much bigger than that. So it fits in my cigar box very nicely. There you go, see? There's the one that was I had, but I don't like. This one's got a nice you know, manual scale setting. Um, it was inexpensive. I got this one from Marlon P. Jones and Associates. And I think I paid maybe $12, $13 for it. But I like this meter for using the, on the RF probe and whatnot. So it's my next, it's my newest meter for going inside my toolbox or my cigar box toolbox. Cigar toolbox? Hmm. Tool cigar box? Tool whatever. Cigar. Whatever you want to call it. So like now, Harbor Freight, okay. Um, you know, you got the typical Harbor Freight Sentech meter. I mean, I have, uh, I have dozens and dozens of these because I used to get them when the when they had the free coupon. They don't do that anymore. But, but this is also it's not an auto ranging. It's, it's a, a no frills, but it works. This works better than my auto ranging when I'm doing an RF probe. But that works pretty good too. And you can buy that for six bucks, six bucks at Harbor Freight. Um, I do like that green one I just got from Wallen P. Jones. Charlie, you were going to ask another question there? Oh, no. Question? Oh, well, okay. was just, just a scratch. <laughs> okay. Feel free to interrupt me. Uh, so, you know, but meters are important. And I like, I do have a much bigger meter that's on my bench uh, that you know, can measure um, Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit. It can measure capacitors. It can measure um, transistor um, HF, HFFE, you know, it does all kinds of stuff, but it's, it's a big meter. And I like to have a nice small one that fits in my toolbox that I don't have to actually take out and put it on my bench and put it in the toolbox, put it in the bench. I can leave it in there and I don't mind. So, uh, that's pretty, pretty nice. Um, so that's one thing. Now, one of the, one of the things we have, uh, can you show me my, show my, uh, my homework? Uh, one of the other things is, you know, we've done lots of billathons in the, put this down here so you can see my spam can. Um, 
we've had lots of build-a-thons and, and people uh, are not really prepared. So our bill a even in Dayton, when I do the bill thons out there or anywhere I've done a bill thon you know, they, they sit there with a bunch of parts and they're in a pile and they have to sort through and find them and whatnot. If you're in a bill thon like a live stream bill thon you know, time is of the essence. You need to be able to, to or even, <laughs> even a bill thon at Dayton, I've been in bill thons that I thought was going to take an hour and it starts at four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm putting away the tools at midnight. Okay. Not a lot of fun. Um, so, Sorting your parts out before you, you sit down to build. I mean, that's the only way to go. In this case, you know, I, I put a couple of pieces of, uh, of uh, anti-static foam. I sorted all my parts. I've got them written down what they are. So, um, and I can do that all, I mean, I did that about an hour ago, uh, but I'm ready to go. I've got everything identified. I've got my LEDs checked and all that kind of stuff. So I can set this aside and I can build real quick. Now, hopefully, Everybody should have done their homework assignment and done the same thing. Um, I pre-bent my resistors at four tenths of an inch, and I've got my LEDs sorted and colored uh, by color and and whatnot. And you know, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to be serious. Um, so I'm going to set this aside because I don't need to be. I don't want this on on my build area, but I want it someplace where it's easily accessible so I can grab parts. Charlie looks like he's ready. He's got his um does he have a set up? He's got his parts there. Is his parts sorted? I uh, it looks to me like they're in a bag. I don't know. There he hey, is. All right, okay. He okay, sorted okay, his okay, parts. Okay. okay, we take that back. Uh one of the first things you want to do though is is you want to you want to put a hole in the bottom of the board, uh bottom of the can, and it's best to do it when the board is not populated. So the board's going to sit up on the can like so. Okay. Forward a little bit. Okay. Yep, so what you want to do is you want to take that same thing and transcribe it to the bottom. Okay. And get it reasonably even all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and what I do is I use a Sharpie, hold it down, and go right through the bolt hole and mark it. And there's the spot where I got to drill a hole. So show on the board. Which hole you want? Oh. Because I was looking at the big hole, and that's not the one. You no, use. no, that's <laughs> not the one. This guy right here is the uh, is the bolt hole for holding for pinching this board to the top of the can so it doesn't doesn't fall off. Okay, so I just transcribe that hole down to the bottom of the can. A little bit further towards you. Yeah, okay, there you okay. so there's the spot right there, and it just so happens I've got a a handy dandy little drill driver, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Phillips screwdriver, go right where that mark is. I'll give it a little womp. Okay, so I got a dent there. There you go. That, that can is ready. Got a couple of nice shards down here of, of uh, metal. So I am going to make sure that I don't lose those. No, I knew you were going to use them later. No, I'm not going to use them later. I just don't want them going into, into Steve's socks. There's glitter all over the floor. Yeah, there's glitter all over here now. Okay, so that can is ready, and you notice that. Here's the the bolt. Fits right down in there, and I think that's an eighth inch, eighth inch drill bit. That's a number six, uh, number six bolt, and that is a 916, no, 964 drill bit, 964. So once you, and you only have to do that once you go to put it in, but you should mark it before you clutter that board up with a bunch of stuff. Okay. And the way this thing is going to go is uh, I'm going to prepare this can right now. Okay. It's, it's not really hard is you got this short one inch bowl and that comes up to the bottom of the can. You drop a, uh, I'm going to get my, you drop a uh, a lock washer on there and a bolt. I mean a nut. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to do that the old fashioned way and get your fingers down there. Watch out those sharp that sharp edge from that from that ridge that's in there. Okay, come on. <laughs> okay. 
This is the hardest part of the whole building the whole kit is getting yeah. is getting the nut on that on that bolt down there. Normally on a tuna can, that's not that deep, but this is a deep can, so um, well I guess I'm gonna hold the nut with the with the screw the with the pliers and see if I can't screw the back of the there it is. Okay. So so I held the nut with the pliers and then screwed the, the bolt in from the back side. And of course it's got a lock washer. So now I can hold on to that thing with the, with the, uh, whoops, oh shoot. That's a, uh, that's a flat screw. So I'll tighten that up and then I'll put another nut on it. This one, this one might be a little bit easier. Yeah. And I'll, whoops, nope. <laughs> okay, come on. Yeah, red's got the uh, spam light as opposed to. Yes. As opposed to the turkey spam. Yeah. Um, okay, and I got to do this again. Nice try. Oh, yeah, that works. So now I'm going to take and and go down about. Nope. That didn't go. That didn't go. Okay. Now I'm now. I'm, nope. I still don't have it. Okay. Uh. Well, this is the hardest part of the of the kit. You know, <laughs> is getting the uh, bolt down there. Ordinarily, we don't have to be this convoluted. Okay. There we go. I'm on there. I go going down about maybe. Half the distance of that so of that uh, closer to you. Yeah, okay, you go. about half the distance, maybe a quarter to five sixteenths of an inch. We want a lot of a lot of this this uh, coupling nut hanging up there, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Put a lock washer back on it. Well, Now you don't have to do this right now. I'm I'm trying to do it because I got to show you how to do it anyway. So might as well do it right now. Then I put that coupling nut on it, and I'll tighten that down. I'm tightening it against the against this. I'm gonna hold that nut again and tighten that coupling nut on it. And now, when this board this this uh, bolt comes down from the top, it's gonna go into that coupling nut. And you can tighten it down. So that's how it stays on top. So there's the, uh, give me a close up here. Okay, see how that, that coupling nut? Uh, yeah, no, it's good. That's good. Okay. So it's sitting up there and it's got a, there's a jam nut underneath it, a lock washer, and the oh, coupling nut. Point it back at the thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's how you, that's how you process that. I'll put this aside. Okay. So can's done. So now we can work on this board. Uh, in your homework assignment, you had to deal with, with LEDs and the orientation because they are, they only go in one way, anode and cathode. Well, they unfortunately go in both ways. No, they go in both ways, but they only work one way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, one of the things I, I said you could do is, um, uh, um, I'm going to cut the. Cut the wires off of the the, and this is why I drew the pitch. Oops. Uh, let's go a little bit further down. I cut too 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 much into the insulation, so I can take these guys. I'm gonna make them a little bit longer. Uh, I got my I got my. I made something else while whilst. Uh, this is my my newest creation, which is a tuna can with a bolt through it and a little stopper. And then I got this this little mechanism on the side here made out of bus wire, so I can feed stuff through it, and it stays up high. So now I can just basically pin pin these leads. It's always nice to have. Here's some nice. It's always nice to have something like this guy right here. This is a little solderless breadboard, the smallest one you can get uh, that I'm aware of. 
And what I can do is I'm going to just make a little circuit. I'm going to put my 9 volt battery. I'm going to put my um, negative on one side. Okay. And then I'll take my 1K resistor. Because uh, oh, bring up that LED drawing. The LED drawing. Yeah, the LED drawing. Yeah. Okay. See up on the up up in the middle of the yeah, uh, thing, yeah, yeah. the little LED test circuit. I got the LED. I got a nine volt battery, and I got this one K resistor. Okay. And so now I can take and plug my battery in. Now I'm doing this with a solid breadboard, so I don't have to actually solder them, but. Uh, Oops, I want to uh, I want to bring this guy over so it's only one uh, uh, one row away from the LED, the uh, nine volts. So now I can plug this thing in like this. And can you tell? Oh boy, you can, yeah, there you go. You can see that's a blue one. Okay, and you know the orientation because you you can now read which which is black and which is I mean which is long, which is short, basically. The long side is the anode. That's the red positive side. So I already did this with the blues. So here's the same thing with the red. And you can, can you tell that's red? Uh, no, you know what? It's a white bomb. You, well, you can't tell it's red because cameras don't like red. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. That one does. That one does. Okay. So there's a red one. And then, of course, we had the orange one. Okay. Yeah, picks it up as orange. Now, another thing that you can, uh, a lot of hand fest. Now I can take this part because I got them all sorted and I don't need this anymore. And see, I haven't destroyed anything. I haven't destroyed the resistor. I haven't destroyed the, the uh, snap. Put the resistor back at the 1K mark. Okay. Another thing in a lot of hand fest, you see something like this with guys who sell LEDs or, or test pieces. Uh, this is an LED checker. So you can put the same thing. You can take this LED. And you can put it in there and you push the button and there's your orange LED. The other thing you can tell is the fact that I can go all the way down here to two. And you can still see that's quite, quite, quite orange, quite bright. And that's only two milliamps going through it. So I know that's at least a super bright. So you just keep moving it up until it blows up and then you know what the Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, want, you, don't, you don't care about the limit. What you're looking for is, is it a regular LED or is it an ultra bright or super bright? Oh, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. So you can tell that so much, but there's only a very limited amount of things here. Now, now I ha this is a shameless hustle right yep, now. No, no. Shameless Altoids hustle. Tin. There's an Altoids tin that says Zomboids on it. That's my yep. label. And there's a little a mini Hamfest tester kit. Okay. And inside here I have um, a lot of test places, and in the case here, I can get 25 microamps. So I'm going to put 25 microamps through this orange LED, and then I push the test button. Oh, I saw it barely flicker. It there. barely, oh. it it barely lights. It okay. Off the smoke so I'm going to put it up at uh, I'll put it up at at 2.5 milliamps, and there's a nice orange. Yep. Okay. That's going into another test, by the way. Okay. Um, so I know that because it barely lights at 25 micro, that's probably an ultra bright or super bright. Hmm. Okay. And indeed, this one I think was rated at 8,000 mini candle at 20 milliamps. So if I go to 25 milliamps, which is a normal rating for this thing, one, two, three, four, yeah, one, two, three, yeah. That's pretty darn bright for yeah. orange. Okay. Now I'll put that back. Now we'll do a, the red one. Um, I'm going to go down to 25 microamps again. And you can see that's much redder than the orange was at 25 microamps. Mm. Okay. And that's because this guy here will take um, at 100 milliamps, which would normally burn up a lot of LEDs. It puts out 35,000 mini candela, which mm. is why I only put, had to put two of them in the kit. <laughs> it's quite bright. Whoops. What did they do? Did I get in the wrong hole? Okay, 25, 25 milliamps right there. There it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's that's flooding the uh, the camera. So that's how I mean that's how I test them at a ham fest. I have this little handy dandy thing in my pocket, and I can test all kinds of stuff. Mm. Uh, you can test crystals. You can test headphones. You can test uh, speakers. Um, 
volt meters, amp meters, that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's shameless, shameless commerce division of, of uh, QRPME. So, all right. Uh, another thing I had uh, from last time, um, I can't show it because we don't have that particular part in this kit, but um, so we'll, okay, we'll, we'll continue on now. Um, the last time we had a problem, we had to take these RCAs and cut that back thing off because it's too big. Well, this board is a factory fresh board and I made the hole bigger. So it snaps in. We had a comment. Do I have to cut those off again? No. Um, so they just fit in now. Um, so I think. Let's get going. Uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay. Because, I mean, it's not going to take a long time. Uh, so. In the case of this, we're going to start with uh, all our low things again. I like to start with resistors and diodes because they lay flat on the board, easy to work with. So in this case, I I'm gonna I see the first one I encounter is 51 ohms, and I can, since I've got my homework done, I can go right over to my parts, pull off the 51, put it in the holes, and voila, the first part is inserted. I'm going to go right down the list because the next one, no, the next one is a 1 in 4148, which is the diode, one of the diodes. Um, did everybody who's watching get their diodes? I'm hoping. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. All right. So remember diodes have a black bar uh, on one end, which matches the little line that's on the, on the uh, silk screen. So... Uh, yep, there you go. Can we see it? Yep. Let me turn that board. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Okay. And you see there's a there's a line right there. And so we match it up with the black bar and we put that in there. And that fits in. I say I already pre-bent that to 0. 0.3 inches. And I met, I, it's not that I had to measure it because I know when I design a board that resistors are typically 0.4 unless I can't fit it in or it has to be longer. Uh, diodes are 0 0.3, these typical signal diodes. So I got another one. At least two people said, yep, they got their diodes. Good. Yeah, I was horrified when, and the guy who you can thank about having the right parts is, is Red because he, when he did his homework, he was looking at him and he said, hey, I can't seem to read the right value on those diodes. And sure enough, I grabbed a bag that was mislabeled. And I put two Zener diodes in every one of these kits, and I didn't spot it. Okay, so I got a 1K resistor, which is this multi one here that's, that's brown, brown, black, black, brown. Or if I flip it over, it's brown, black, black, 10010. And then the the uh, um, factor, which tells me it was a 1K. So there it goes. That's in there. Gee, this is going to go pretty darn quick, I think. <laughs> I intended to do it really quick. And one last is the 47K. So I can go to the 47K and put that in. Okay. Now I'm putting, I spread these guys out just a little bit. Um, to keep them on the board for, uh, when I turn it over. Now, again, normally I would be using my uh, my little. Where'd that board go? Oh, right here. <laughs> normally I'd be using my uh, my little circuit board uh, holding devices, but in this case, this board sits flat very nicely, and I don't have to worry about that. So I'm ready to go. Clean your tip, um, nice and clean. Um, make sure you have clean solder. The solder was in a plastic bag while I was roaming it around in my toolbox. And put a little tip on, a little bit of, little bit of bead. Lay it in there, and you can see things heat up, and you see it flow a little bit, and that's all there is to it. You don't want to put too much down. And you can just go right down the row, and I can slide this around until I get just the right spot for getting that tip in there. Now, I'm not leaving this. If, if I go to, to solder the, the part, and I put the solder there on the part, and I see it doesn't melt, I don't just leave it there. I bring it back out again, wait another second, 
for that part to heat up because um you know if you if you just leave it hanging there um I think there's a good chance of putting too much solder. You don't mm. you don't catch it and you put too much solder and all of a sudden you got a big blob of solder there. So I like to sort of wait a second, add just a little bit, and that's it. So now I can go on the other side and do these guys. Now I'm actually feeding this solder off the spool over here. And quite often I don't really like to do that. I'm going to pull that off and I'm working with like a six inch piece of solder here. So now I'm, I don't, I'm not tugging it against the spool or anything. I, I'm totally free flowing in this, in this solder. Um, no tension, no, I'm not tugging it off of anything. And I just go down and do the other side of those. And I got one, I'm missing one. Now here's another another trick when you when you're dressing up your board. Okay, I got what I put in there. One, two, three, four, five parts I put in. So now I can when I'm cutting the parts off, the leads off. Don't forget to look to make sure you actually soldered the part. That's one way of of, of confirming that you didn't miss anything. So I'm looking at that part before I cut it off. I'm looking at the solder joint. I'm putting my finger on top of the lead so it doesn't go flying. Go right down the base with your flush cutters and drop it right underneath the board. And I can go right down and I'm checking the fact that I haven't missed a solder joint as I'm going down and cutting these leads off. I debugged a, a build from last month or January and uh, looking at the board, I spotted I think uh, one or two places that you know, didn't have any solder at all. Totally missed. Okay. That was pretty easy. Not too hard. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go after the capacitors now. There's two of them. Um, and put those in the capacitor spots. Push them down. Make that nice and stand up okay. And bend. I'm bending them on the back side with my thumb as I'm holding it with my, with my fingertip. So one, one finger's up here, and the other one's working down here, just spreading it out a little bit. Now, this isn't going to be totally flat anymore, but that's okay. It's, it still stays pretty even, so I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about it being. What I'll do, because it's, there's one on either side of the board, so it's relatively stable, but I'll put my finger down here. on the. I'm holding this board down in compression with my finger. It doesn't move around while I find that good soldering point. Oh, good. No comments came in while I was at work. No comment? Oh, come on. Can we have a comment? Someone, please comment. Steve's over there wondering what he's going to do next. Okay. I got to go turn the sap off. Oh, yeah. He's boiling sap out there in the driveway. He's uh, he's multitasking tonight. No, I turned it off. It's good. We will have maple syrup. All right. Okay. So there's the two capacitors. Um. And uh, they look pretty good. I'm just going to make them nice straight up and down. And then I'll do the same thing. I got shorter leads, but I'm still going to put a fingertip over the end of the, of the lead. So when I cut it off, it doesn't go flying. Now, this is the, we have a, the studio up here over his garage. This is nice new construction because the garage is brand new. And we don't want any of those, any of these things here going down in the carpet. So we always keep them in a nice neat pile. Oops, that's not part of that neat pile. Put that back over there. Okay. So um, yeah, that's, the, that's the big part of the circuit. So now we can do our transistor. Uh, I'll get this transistor. How's Charlie doing? Notice there's a flat side of that, of that soak screen. Am I going too fast? No, I was just checking in on. Yeah, let's check oh. in. Let's get some comments. Slow down, slow down. Not a lot of components to solder on this board. So. No, no, I didn't want to make this one too too complicated. I wanted to make it because that was the other thing to, to show that you can make something that's fun and interesting and looks cool and, and I think is a is a compliment to your station. It doesn't have to be complicated. Mm -hmm. You know, it just has to be clever. Okay, so here's my 
transistor down. Um, remember, did you show the orientation of the transistor? As it I, I mentioned it. You were okay. you were out in the thing. Okay. There, there is a flat side of the transistor, and it matches up with the flat side on the silk screen. Now the other thing is, if this is now wobbly, you can of course just set it on the top of your can, and it's not not wobbly anymore. So I'm going to clean my tip. I'm going to put a little bit of beater solder around there again, and then I can go in. Transistors are kind of tricky. You want to make sure that you don't overheat them. So you want everything to be in your favor. So having a little a clean iron, a little excess solder on the tip, and put that in there, and guaranteed you don't stay, stay too long on that on that uh, connection. Again, you see me putting my finger on the board. It's holding my hand, but it's also holding the board to keep it from moving. And that's it. That's all there is to that transistor. Okay, three three leads, three solder points. Put them in the pile, and looking good. Um, next part probably is this is this three pin move over towards the blue tape there yeah know? okay this three pin get your this, hands out of the way <laughs> this is the tricky part because when you solder this thing is you know, if you flip it over it's going to fall out and um Charlie used a piece of tape to hold his components in. well you can do that okay well well we, we are we are open for good suggestions I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it again, and what I can do is I can, but I'll show you, I don't really need to do this, but all you got to do is I'm holding it on one end. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, yep. but all I've got is one end here covered. So I'm going to go to the other end and solder that other end. Pro tip. Don't hold it with your finger, at least not the one that you solder. Well, that that's right. Now, ordinarily, I would do that. I would hold it with my finger. But you'd hold the other end. I'd hold the other end. Now, once you get that, even with the tape, once you get that in there, now what you can do is you can sort of hold it on one finger. Now, I, it's leaning one way, and I don't like that. So I'm going to, to reheat that one connection I just made, and I'm pushing it with my finger so that it, Nope, it's not. I don't I like it. I was gonna say it's still a bit crooked. It's still crooked. There you go. Okay. So and short hand or long hand goes through the board. Short hand, right? Short hand goes in the board. Long hand is where you want the connector. Okay. Uh, so now I've got it sitting there. It's pretty much straight up and down. I like it, nice and even. So now I can go hit the other two. Remember. Yeah, so short end goes in the board. Just yep. And that goes in the source. Is that what you're looking at? I didn't quite catch that. That was in the source. It's labeled source, I think, right? Okay. Um, so there's the three connections right there. That's looking pretty good. Okay. So now we can probably go with our with our RCA connectors. And I'm gonna use red for power. Because red typically would be a power color on a on a lead, like your battery or your car and whatnot. That's red. Then a couple of whites. Now remember these these things. I nice that I'm so a nice snap in and hold. So now I can go ahead and solder them, babies. I'm gonna lay the. Uh, I'm gonna put a lot of solder on the on that tip, and I'm gonna lay it right up parallel and right against that tab. And so I'm gonna feed lots of solder. Remember, that thing takes some stress as you're pl plugging cables in and out. So you want to know that you've got lots of solder doing a good mechanical connection. So I'm just feeding a lot of solder in there. Now go to the other side. Now the other side has... Is going this this front was going this way this one's going this way so I'm going to turn it on its side so that I can lay again lay it up against the side of that connector that little lead 
and just pour lots of solder into that. Not not enough that it's going to go over the the pad, but enough that I fill completely fill that hole and make it as as solid as I can. Now look, I had six inches of solder, and I'm pretty much this is my last connection with this hunk of solder. Okay. So there are the three connectors, looking pretty good. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky in that you have to decide what you want for colors. Uh, orange, we only have one orange LED, so we go to the LED, we go to the LED chart. Uh, the LED. LEDs, yeah, okay. So if you look down the in the bottom, it says one orange LED is gonna take 470 ohms. This is R1 equals 470. So you find the 470, okay? And you put that where it says R orange. Now, the, the red LED is, uh, I think the blues are 11,000 mini candela. Okay, and the red is 35,000 mini candela. So the red is three times stronger than the blues. So I happen to like blue LEDs. I, I just, you know, I got most of the tuna can stuff has got bluish labels. So I just like staying with blue. So in this case, I sent everybody four blue LEDs so that you can put blue LEDs at both the blue and the red location. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you want, which is what I'm going to do. But if you want to put reds, you only need to put two reds in because that's going to give you 70,000 mm. mini candela. So, oh, maybe I should do just do reds today. Okay. I don't know. We'll do reds today. Okay. Um, so we'll look at the red and it says two red and we're going to use both red LEDs. Two reds equals uh, R2 equals 75. 75 ohms, which is that little teeny one. Okay. The little uh, eighth watt resistor. So I'm going to put, oh, shoot, okay. All right. I'm going to put, I'm going to put the 75 where it says red, uh, where the red one goes. I'm going to bend that in there. Okay. And because I only, we only have 175, I'll put a hundred, which is close in the other side where the blue would be. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's only. You know, it's just a little bit off. So I'll put the 100 over there. No, I'm sorry. We don't need to do that because we only have two LEDs and we just put a resistor in for two LEDs. Oh. Okay. Um, so let's solder those those guys up. Let me bring my can again. No, we can't do that now, see, because now we got RCAs. Don't let it fit in the can. So, okay. Sorry, did you have a question there, Red? I didn't quite follow what you were saying there, Rex. Okay. Yeah, go back over the resistors. All right. The choice of Hit them. Here's the, the chart down below. See, you got you can either go with one resist, uh, one LED or two LEDs. See the bottom of the chart on the page. Okay. So if you go with one blue LED, the resistor R1 needs to be 430 ohms to get maximum br brightness, you know, 20 milliamps. Um, if if you're putting two blue LEDs in series, okay, then you'd want to use 270 ohms. And and that's the calculation. See so see the calculation over on one side. It's you got a 12 ohm 12 volt battery, let's say, um, and the forward voltage drop of, of a blue LED is 3.2 volts. Okay, so 12 minus 3.2 is what we got to burn up because 3.2 is going to go across the LED. 12 volts is what we got. So that means what uh, uh, 8. Point Eight volts is going to be burned up in the circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I guess I don't, what I don't understand is, so if you want the one blue LED, which why would you want? Why wouldn't you want two? Two is better. But if you want the one, you only put one resistor in the circuit. But if you want two, then you put both of those in, right? No, no. You put you put a different resistor. You put the see the see the the drawing shows that R one is a resistor if you only have one LED. And R2 is the resistor, that same resistor if you got two LEDs in the circuit. Okay. So we're going to put two LEDs in the circuit. But right? we still only need one resistor. We only still have one resistor, but now the two two LED resistors is going to be 270 ohms for blue. Okay. 
or down at the red, it's going to be 75 ohms. Okay, I think I get it. So, okay. so if we're going with two blue LEDs, we put nothing in R1 and we put the 270 in R2. Nope. No. <laughs> There's no such thing as R1 on the board or R2. It just... Okay. If oh, well, the, whole. <laughs> <laughs> the R, It should be a sub-2, meaning R for two it. LEDs or R for one LED. Okay. Okay. But they still go into the same spot. They go in the board. same spot. There's only okay. one place for one resistor. Okay. And it's going to be... Uh, uh, for, um, for two, you're, you're doing two blue LEDs. Well, no, we're actually going to oh. do red. I'm oh, doing okay. two blue LEDs. So, so for me, if I'm doing two blue LEDs, I put uh, I 270 put ohm in the blue. Right, right. In the R blue position. Okay. Uh, so well, I'm going to do two reds for this guy. So I'm so going to want. A, so there's an R blue and R orange and an R. Show right. That, show that on the. Okay. Up there. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Move okay. It closer. Move it closer to the camera. Okay. Yep. See, there's an R blue, R orange, and R red. There's only one resistor, but it changes depending upon if you want one LED or two LEDs. So if you're using blue LEDs, you put it in R blue. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Look at this. Uh, let's go back to the schematic for a minute. Okay. All right. See, I have three places where you can put three different circuits on the back of the board. Here's the back of the board. We've got three different circuits we can put LEDs in. It doesn't care. I don't care what the LEDs are, but in the in the in the original design, I had both red and blues in it. Okay. okay. So this was just a way of keeping them up straight as the you know what was what was where. Okay. Okay. But you can put any color LED anywhere you want it okay. in that circuit. But let's say we stick to where you've got the things. right. So we're going to put red two LED red LEDs over here in the red circuit. Okay. Okay. So, so I've got my seventy five ohm resistor in the R red. In the R red, and I'm going to lay in two LEDs over here in the red circuit, and I'm going to lay an orange one in there, and no blues. Okay. 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 So, so how how many how many LEDs are we putting in? Is it, is we're going to put two two reds and an orange. We're total of three LEDs then. Right, and the orange one just makes it look like there's a there's a heater in the in the. You'll see it when we get done. Yeah, but he wants to know which ones to put in so that he can get done. We're going to put one orange in the orange spot and two reds in the red spot. Okay, so for me, for blue, I'm going to do blue and red. Yep. So I I have the uh, I'm going to do two blue actually and one red. Okay. No, he wants to do two blue and one red. So in the blue circuit, you're going to put the you're going to put the put resistor the, across our blue. Yeah. Two seventy across blue. Yeah. And then over in the red circuit, you're going to put the uh, resistor for one red LED, which is uh, I can't look at that diagram. There you go. One one hundred ohm for one and seventy five ohm for two. Right. So you put a hundred ohms in, in the red circuit yep. and two hundred and seventy in the blue circuit. Yep. Okay. Yep. And nothing in orange. Oh no, orange is going to be. Look at, see the orange has got four hundred and seventy. But he's not putting an orange LED. In. Oh, you got to put an orange LED in. So how many total? So there's a total of how many LEDs though? I I, <laughs> I think that was a sarcastic. You have to put an orange in. I don't. No, the orange it. makes it look like there's a filament in the tube. Yeah, but if he doesn't want orange, he doesn't have to put an orange in. Charlie, come on. Okay, well if I okay, it's, I'm I'm doing two blue. Yep. And yeah. then I have uh, the option of one more LED, right? No, you can. There's there's three circuits on the back of the board: red, blue, and orange. You can put them all in. You can put them all in. Oh, that's what I'm asking. How many total do we put in? And so, well, uh, it's, it, it's, it's your option. You could put up to five. Well, of course I want to put five then. Okay. Well, then okay, then go for five. <laughs> okay, so for five, then okay, I get so. Um, I don't so, want the 100 resistor on red if I got two reds coming in. Yep. So if you've got two reds, then on the R red, you're going to put uh, 75 ohm for two. Yeah. 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 There we go. And then for the orange, there's only one orange that there's only yep. option to have one orange. So that's 470 be, for so an orange. 470 for orange. Okay. Now I'm getting it. Now I'm getting it. Okay. And you're going to put two blues in, so you got 270 ohms for the for the blues. Yep. yep. Okay. But if you decided you didn't want the orange LED. Then you can just not don't, put anything in that circuit. You don't put anything in there. Or if you decided, oh, I, I don't like red. Uh, I just want to do one red LED. 
then you can put a 100 ohm in the red circuit. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, for, so it's 470 then for for the orange. Okay, got it. Yep. Right. Okay. All right. So, so, um, so we're going to do two reds and an orange on this board here. So I've got, I've got uh, 470 for the orange, and I got 75 for the red. So I'm going to solder those in. Okay. Are we all? Is everybody on the same page here? Yeah. So Earl asked that same question. So you can put in all five LEDs. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully I, we just walked through that. Yeah. So. Well, the thing is, I found that I like aesthetically, I liked one orange to be the filament. Yeah. So the bulb's on, the vacuum yeah. coom is lit. And everybody, everybody I've been at a hand fest who walked up and says, What do you geez, that is that running hot? And I said, Yeah, yeah it's running really hot. <laughs> no, there's no there's no uh heater, there's no cathode in here, it's just an orange LED. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. makes it look that way. And then I run four blues, two in the red circuit and two in the blue circuit. Yeah. Okay. That's what I have. And I, I, I left mine at home. Unfortunately, I was going to, I was going to show it off, but yeah. I don't have That's it. Okay. So, so we're just going to make two reds and one orange on this one. So but yeah, all right. I need to spool off some more solder here. I burned up all my solder. So you you said you were doing two reds and one orange. I'm doing two reds and an orange. So right? you're going to put nothing in the blue circuit. Nothing in the blue circuit. And you're going to put uh, everything in the orange and the red. Right. And for orange, you put the 470. And yep. for red, you put uh, 75. But yeah. you didn't have a 75, so you put 100. No, I put 70. Oh, no. oh, that's right. You decided you weren't putting the other one in. So yeah, I wasn't going to put in the other. So, so there are my two resistors. 75 for red and 470 for blue uh, for orange. So I'll cut those off. Take those leads. Do we do we know who's who's actually here? Everybody just chime in a comment so I know who in the heck is Richie's radio room. Okay. Uh I just wanted to see who was here. Yep, there's a bunch of people. Earl. Earl. Okay. Hello. Yeah, uh, there's Richard John. Earl, John's John. here. Yeah. Um, is uh, these are just the people who commented. Yeah. Okay. Just just wondering. Okay. Yeah. Um, just trying to see if there were some people like, hopefully. Uh... Roger. Okay. All right. So so we got the LEDs in there. So we got the resistors in. Now we got to put the LEDs in. So orange, it's really easy because there's only one LED, and you can see the little the little um, you can see the, the moniker I have, let me get my, my, you can see the, the, the silk screen markings show which direction the LED is going. So the anode is over here and the cathode is over here. Okay. So I'm going to take the orange LED, which is only one. Okay. Um, I'm going to double check it again. I'll use my LED box and I know that the cathode, see see on my box, the cathode is a short leg. So I'm going to turn it right around so I know exactly where it is. I'm going to put it out. Okay. Uh, one thing I'm going to do different. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put the vacuum tube in the socket. So I'm going to get the vacuum tube out. And all this does is it fits on the front of the thing. I'm going to try to find, I'm going to get the lettering out of the way. So the lettering is towards the back. I'm just going to wiggle it around, and get it into those. See, it just sits in there like that. Okay. So now, uh, when I put this in the spam can, I sort of have these pins sort of stick up, and they're kind of in my way a little bit. But I just want to work around them. So I got my one orange LED, and it's going to go in upside down, so it's pointing down, and I'm going to put it. In here, and I'm going to bend the LEDs around. So they go down to that pad. Okay, I'm going to. Oh, I'm going to Sorry, move. Charlie, you asked about the cathode and anode. Yeah, the, the long one is is uh, does that go on the left on the? Uh, which the way? long one goes on where the little LED marks are. Okay. And the short one goes where the blue red. So I'm worried about. I'm just. I'm just going to lay in and solder the anode over on this side. Okay, and then I can sort of move this LED around, and then bend the anode on this side. 
uh, I'm sorry, bend the cathode on this side and solder that down. And that's all, all it takes to do that. Um, and looks good. I think I'm okay. So I'm going to cut those off. I'm going to do one at a time because, you know, it's, this is, this is a, it's not hard. It's just that you want to, you, you got a little bit of stuff that you got to work around. So there is one LED pointing up through the hole right about in the center line. And that's the orange one. So now I'm going to go down to the red circuit and I'm going to put two LEDs in. So here's my two reds. And I'm going to put one on one side of the hole. So I'm going to just go down and bend that red LED down. I probably should have said that you should probably put some solder on that pad first. Okay. So now when I put this red LED in there, I'm trying to make sure it fits on one side of the of the opening. Because we got to cram another one in there. Yeah. Okay. So you can see the close-up camera, you can see I've got it sitting this side of the center line of the of the opening. Okay. See, I've got it shoved on this side. So now I'm going to take a, the second red LED and keeping the same orientation where the long wire, long side is on this side. I'm going to put that in the hole right next to it. And I'm going to bend the long side down. Come on. Well, this might be this might be a good place to. I probably shouldn't have put those darn. Um, you know, we can't do that either. We're stuck. Probably shouldn't have put those RCA jacks on. We probably should have left it alone so it's going to be nice and flat so we could get it in here easier. Um, I think it was this way here. And so I need to, need to get that down there and I need to put some solder on that pad down there. Put this right next door to the first one. Get it down there. Here we go. Got an idea. Uh, where's my flat screwdriver? Right here. Where my finger is, I'm replacing it with that screwdriver. Just something to hold it down. Just something to hold it down. I'm going to get a nice dab of solder on my iron. I'm going to go down here, and there we go. Boom. Wait for it to cool and then take my thing away. Now I've got this dangling lead here, okay, which is no big deal. I'll cut the I'll cut this piece off. Whoop, now see that went flying over here, but I got crowded it. Okay, now we'll we'll take this guy and sort of bend the two together. All you need is a dab. It's going to look messy, but we're we're working with a limited amount of room down there. And this is going to be hidden anyway. So all I got to do now is just tie those two leads together with a little blob of solder, and that's it. I'm going to dress this up a little bit by cutting the excess leads off. And now I've got two red LEDs and an orange LED on the bottom of the board. Pull that up a little bit. Okay, so there we go. Um, now, this thing still comes off, okay? Um, so it goes on, comes off, and now we got to put the 9-volt battery leads over here. We got a minus and a plus. I'm going to – I'm not going to have them sticking out the other side. I'm going to actually solder over – I'm gonna have to make, oh, here it is. Okay, I'm going to solder over the holes. I'm just going to put a big blob of solder there on both. Oh, so you're not going to solder. You're not going to put the leads through the holes. I'm not going to put the leads through the holes. I'm just going to lay it right on top. So I, cover, I filled the holes up, put a lot of solder there, and... 
that just because of the annoyance of putting braided wire through a little hole? No, that's the annoyance of having those two little pointy things on the top of the board uh -huh. when okay. you cut the leads off. Yeah. Now I don't have to cut the leads off. They don't stick out the board on okay. the other side. Okay. I it was just the annoyance of getting nope. braided wire through the hole. Nope. So now I can cut these leads off. We're almost there to test this thing. Um, I can put a nine volt battery in here now. And gee, oh, I, I got to put the jumper on to internal because I got a nine volt battery inside. Gee, nothing happens. Okay, That's because this power now, normally power coming in would be 12 volts and this thing would be light lit okay going to internal with a nine volt battery this is acting like a switch so i'm going to put a little night uh, a little rca connected this that's shorted i'll put that in there as a switch and look at that mm -hmm. does that look like it's got a, a heater in the, there is that just the orange one that's just the orange one yep. okay um so if i want to if i want to um to turn on another one, I'd have to have some RF going in here. Okay, so let's put some RF in here. So I'm gonna go, I have a tuna tin two over here. I mean, this is ready to go. I, I, Why don't you bring the tuna tin two, or can you bring it onto the camera? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the rest of my parts, which I don't really need right at the moment. I'm gonna set them aside somewhere over here. Okay, and I have, here's the tuna tin two we built in the first episode, so first build a -thon. Uh, Pull the light towards you, the new board. Pull it towards you, the new board. Oh, the new the board. New, yeah, there you go. Okay. Further. All right, okay. I'm looking. Further, I, okay, further, further. I can see it. Now. Pull it, pull it further. Pull yeah. It further but, towards you. There you go. Yeah, but you can't, you can't. Okay, I got to do something to I'm going to do this. We got too much light here. Because, <laughs> I, I, you know, you can't really see this, okay? But, okay. All right. Okay. Maybe that. Okay. Oh, uh, you can still see that in there. Okay. So now I got a tuna tin two. Um, I gotta I gotta couple the output of the tuna tin two. I gotta have a a output cable. I'm not gonna stand on formality and uh yes, I will. I'll stand on formality. I actually put an an RF cable here. I don't know if it's any better or worse. Okay, now I gotta go antenna. And TX. So over here, I'm going to go to the TX. So there's my there's my cable hooking to my transmitter. Okay. And I'm going to plug in the Tuna Tin 2. I've got a shortwave receiver over here. So turn it sideways so we can see the light better, maybe. Okay. Yeah, that works okay. I cut the lights a little bit. Okay. Um, nine volt battery. Um, hold on a second. Why is it acting like it's not keying? Uh, do you have that plugged in power? Well, I got a nine volt battery on it. Okay. What if that nine volt battery is any good? I got two nine volt batteries. I got one now inside the uh, inside the the CB cider. Uh, let's go to could DC turn, volts. Could you turn your radio down a little bit? Okay. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I got nine volts. Why doesn't this act as though? Seven oh two nine. 
Well, you know, we this was working fine just before we went to lunch, to dinner. Uh, got a question? Yeah. Does it matter if uh, those LEDs on the bottom are touching those those uh, the, the pins? Yeah. Pins. Uh, well, I mean, you try to the there's a lot of bric-a-brac in here, and generally there's not a really good short circuit in it other than the heater. So for most of the pins, it's not a big deal. Uh, I haven't had a problem yet where I built one and I've touched the pin and it's, and it's caused a problem. Um, yeah, I have to change on the fly here because I don't have room in mine for more than three. So I'm going to just go with two reds and a green and a, and an orange. It's okay. If I have the, the LED and uh, the resistor in there for the blues, it's not going to matter. No, 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 it won't. no nothing, nothing will, nothing will happen. Yeah. So I'm just getting caught up because I had a hard time soldering to these pads here but yeah it's kind of tight underneath there too to get all yeah that in there. all right so i guess next step is to plug it into the radio then the tune it into well yep to plug it into power first and the orange one should light up well, well you, can, you can also do you it still have your thing on the internal yeah i have it on the internal okay that's the battery that's lighting the leds okay, okay. Uh, but why i can't seem to get my tune it into to output anything to transmit any RF. I don't hear it on my on my. Yeah. Okay, so you want? Let's see. So we want to get the battery it first. Fine earlier. Did you solder the battery leads in here? Yeah. Uh, he just soldered them on the back side so they weren't sticking up through. Without even poking them through, just laid them over it and soldered them right onto the pads. Okay. I'm not getting any RF coming out of my tune for some strange reason. I'm going to steal this battery back and just trade batteries to see if there's any difference. So uh, Earl asked about LED orientation and the, ah. oh, the, the cathode. The cathode goes here. Show the board. Okay. Where, where the cathode and the anode goes. So uh, if you look at the bottom of the board, okay, over here, you'll see there's the representation of the LED. So the anode is over here. The cathode is over here. And the cathode is the short cathode lead? Cathode is the short lead. Yep. Okay. That's the one that has the flat spot on that side, too. We'll look at the schematic diagram of the LED, and you'll yep. see yeah, the flat side. Of the LED has the, it's short, the short lead, lead and that's the cathode. Yep. That's the negative side of the LED. Okay, now I've got okay. I've got a different battery on my tuna tin. You can hear me transmitting. I got a Sony shortwave receiver yep. sitting there. So now I'm gonna put this other battery in here. I got an orange light. Okay. Or green. It all comes across as really red. Unfortunately. Well, that's because red is close to orange. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but it, I mean, it's much brighter, obviously. Okay. It's really brilliant. But I do like four blues because it's totally different from orange. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, on the camera, it just comes across I, as I do believe, more orange. if you look at the demonstration video, I have the link for the demo. Yeah. Okay. That's the, the can I built. It's got four blues in it. And you'll see what it looks like at four blues. And I think it's much better. Which is why I sent the extra, when I sent the LED, the uh, new diodes and the resistor, I stuck in a, I stuck an extra pack of two blue LEDs and a double uh, a double LED resistor. So, what's the range of RF that you have to be going into? Uh, well, this tuna tin is not even putting out a watt. But I mean, does it have to be? Uh, you're you're on twenty meters. Doesn't make meters? any difference. It snips okay. RF and turns it into a signal. So any sort of RF coming across there. Any sort of RF 
well, HFRF. 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 Okay. Uh, I don't think we put 440 in there. I don't know. I mean, you could probably put this on the on your walkie and see if it lights up with a walkie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's five watts. Um, probably. Enough, I didn't think about that. Probably enough uh, uh, harmonics on some of those crappier ones. That okay. So on. our our two reds, one orange, works pretty good. Okay. So if I if I unplug this and take the cable off, just get this other stuff out of the way for a minute, then I can take this and you move that a little closer to the camera. Yeah. I do believe I have to take the tube off um, and and put the 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 bolt down through there and get it into that link down there whoops um then i can whoops i need my phillips for this one whoops oh my goodness forgot about the battery okay turn your radio down yeah uh, we'll turn it off sorry okay so the battery is going to go inside so i'm going to put this on um i'm going to I'm going to to unplug our, my shorting plug. So I, that's my switch. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to, I got some little stick on Velcro and I'm going to take and stick it onto the battery. And then stick the other Velcro onto it. I didn't supply that as part of the kit. You have to find your own, I mean, hot glue, double-sided foam tape, anything to keep the battery from rattling around inside. So I'm going to take this and go all the way down to the bottom of the can. Previously been chewed yeah. bubble gum. I'm going, to, I'm going to press it against the side, and it's now Velcroed in there. And I'm going to, whoops, that was the right way in the first way. I'm going to peer down on the can with, and then use my Phillips screwdriver to push down on the thing and see if I can get it right there. I go inside the... The link nut that's down there. And there you go. Then I can put my tube back in. I'm going to use most of the, the part of this that's yeah. very clear. Okay, I'm going to use that towards the front of the rig. Just going to find the 12 holes that's going to fit. Come on. And then, for extra measure, I included this O-ring, so you can pull it down there, and it, it forms a light leak to keep the light coming up to the thing. So I'll put that switch back in there. And look at that. There's, there's it lit. I'll put the, the transmitter back in. I'll turn the tuna tin back on. We never turned it off. I'll turn the receiver back on. I'm using a pretty, <laughs> the free key is not really the best Morse key to go with, but I'm just doing a, so one fellow says, I'm a CW lover, but don't see the use of this. April 1st? Uh, yeah. I, I, I happen to, to like April. You got anything that's <laughs> April 1st? That's the favorite day of my of the entire year for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's this stuff. All right. So <laughs> do you want to help me troubleshoot what, uh, through mine and see why okay. it's not working? Hang on one second, Charlie. Yep. I got I to gotta retort to this guy who has no use for it. <laughs> It's like, it's just a fun way of having, a novel way of having a CW on the air yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, we, no, we I, can go out to the antenna, you, you can be transmitting. This is not just hooked up to a transmitter for fun. It's actually in line with your antenna. Yeah. And as yeah. you're sending a signal out the antenna, it's coming through here and you actually you see, see your it. code yeah. going out the antenna. What's the matter with that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who is that CW guy anyway? <laughs> I want to know who that is. I don't know if I want to say. So okay. let's go with Charlie. Charlie's not. <laughs> okay, Charlie, what's your problem? We have another question here. Well, okay. I, I, uh, 
nine volt battery, which I know works. And I plug it in and I don't get anything. Well, so, that's because you need a shorting plug on that red RCA jack. So, oh, jeez. All right. You need the power jumper between internal and the middle. Yeah. That see, that, see the little right internal? Here. Yeah. Right here. Yep, the pin header. Yep. You need to put the two pin header on INT to middle. Okay. So, see, uh, it's it, when I'm not paying attention, it's kind of hard to pay attention and build. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll need the, a shorting plug on the red power thing. Right. Okay, so yeah. here's the here's the blue. Do you have any so, RCA cable laying around? Yeah, I do. So here's here. Let's do this first. So this goes yep. over the what? On the internal side. Internal INT to, to the, the middle, middle. To the middle pin. Let me try to make sure I got this right. It might be easier to to hold that with your pliers and put it in, but but if you can get your fingers in there, that's fine. And then somehow you just need the short the center conductor and the outer conductor of that right. RCA jack. Right. Uh, which one? This one? Yeah. 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 That's power. Okay, yeah, so what, just, what do we want me to do with that? When you have a nine volt battery inside, that power connector turns into a switch. Okay. Yeah. To keep so that's a way of keeping the battery fresh. So you just need to short the, the center conductor with the outer conductor. Oh just center. Oh, just yeah. Stick uh, an alligator okay, clip. Here, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. I know stick an it. alligator clip in or paper clip. I got it. I got it. Yeah, well, I'll do this. Hold on. Kind of funky to make work, but. I have a. I'll do this. Be amazed what I do. It kind of looks like a kindergarten. Paper clips and scotch tape. When I was I'll put this in here, and, and then, then just, this end right here. Yeah, just short them together. I'll just uh, wrap them, I guess, or something here. Let's see. Somehow, I'll just I'll touch them together. It, the orange LED should come on. All right. Yeah. Well, it's not. I, I took the battery off just because oh. I'm, I'm still very cautious that way. Okay. There you go. Oh, it's not coming on still. Dang it. Huh. Oh, there it is. Oh, hey, oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> this just needed to be shorted, and I maybe now, these, yeah. Now without having without having the a transmitter or anything, I'll turn my receiver off. I do. I have it. I have no, a no, transmitter. No, I, was, I was just gonna say for anybody else, all you gotta do is take a wire from, um, um take a wire from. Let's see. Uh, Yeah, take a wire from the. Um, a way. Nobody can see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, anyway, if I turn it this way, okay, yeah. I can take and 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 short the the left side of the res of the transistor with ground. Oh, we can light up the. Right, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I, I can do that. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I've got to make sure I plug. Okay, so how do you get the? How do you connect it to the to the uh, tuna tin two? Let me look at that again. So you, you come out of the out of the tuna tin tuna tin. Come out of the antenna. You, I saw you like uh, uh, you sending more code right through the tuna tin. Yeah. Go ahead. And so where were you plugged in with oh, it? I'm gonna hook mine back up. So I'm hooking it up to where it says trans trans TX. Oh, I see. Okay. So that counts for your transmitter. Now your antenna would go into the other one, going out to the antenna. This get a... is the line, and it's totally benign. It it, yes. it doesn't interfere with the signal going out to the antenna. It just sniffs a little bit of that R that RF and turns it into a dancing light and syncs with your R with your Morse code going out. The okay, door. so so this goes into what portion of the uh, the it into the antenna? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't have all. I don't have all the right parts for that. I guess. I guess I'll. You need I'll another do that RCA later. cable. Yeah. yeah. This needs to be RCA to RCA for that. Darn it. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay. I wish I'd put the that blue in there now. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided I don't like the red because it's too close to the orange. Well, you can unsolder it and put the blue in. Yeah, I can. I can do anything I want. But yeah, so and that's why I gave I put four blues in the package because it, it does look pretty nice. It kind of looks like a kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, you just need you just need to have the antenna from the tuna tin too, rather than going up to an antenna to go to this, and then this goes to the antenna. Right. This so just, just goes in line. This just goes in line to your antenna and it sniffs the RF going out to your antenna and turns it into some underneath your cutters. You want to hear me my board back. 
Yes. Because you'll go home with it and I won't be able to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I just, you know, a lot of, I mean, you see a lot of ham shack with a big giant on the air uh, light they spend a lot of money on. Okay. I'd rather actually see RF, <laughs> a visual interpretation of RF. Um, okay. Do we have, we got, must have another question. Come on. Or another lame comment about about what's it good for <laughs> you gotta remember okay i gotta say one thing in my defense and that is i used to be an electronic toy designer i like to do fun things i do not like building stuff that isn't fun okay if it's not fun i am not interested so um in my defense i just like things that are novel that's kind of funny and uh, yeah i kind of like it Okay. I now I, I do work on serious things too. I have, I have a couple of kits that uh, I'm going to be, hopefully I'm going to have one uh, come four days in May that will be a killer kit. Um, any other comments out there? Um, so, I yeah, I do have, I, I do have this mind of, of sort of going back to the past of these old uh, uh, food oh. can chassis kits and, and coming up with a new, a new, um twist yeah on the old kits so yes i'm thinking about a sardine sender uh, you know my version of a sardine sender uh yes i'm thinking about a hearing a, a hearing aid five kind of uh, my next i i just i like this let's see so uh, i like this can right here yeah. it's just gorgeous it's a it's it's yellow and red and it's pretty and it's cute and it's kind of neat so i'm i'm going to come up with an idea for that one well, mm. earl asked do you solder the second red led where the blue one is labeled no and the answer is no you, solder, in, the, you solder the two red ones in series with they're in other. series now if you had two more reds you could stick you go over there and borrow the blue circuit and turn them in the reds i yep. just the red green the red blue and orange is just a way of keeping when you flip the board over of knowing with what circuit you're working on? Yep. So the the red ones just get soldered in series. Two of them in series. Anno decathode and then anno decathode, anno cathode and anno cathode. Just yep. two in series, just like the schematic and the LED thing. Yep. Um, same with the blue. And it, you know, if you want to use the blue circuit for reds, or if you want to use the red circuit for blues, you just you just use that circuit, but use the values for blue. Yeah. The thing is, red red is a two point one, roughly two point one four voltage drop for a red LED, a blue is 3.2 volts drop. So yeah. you put two... Yeah, so you need different resistors. You need different yeah. resistors because, you know, you want to hit them with as much current as possible to make them nice and bright, but you got different voltages you got to sync up with that with that resistor yeah. to make it happen. And Bunny says, uh, awesome, can't wait to get one. Sounds like... <laughs> okay, Bunny. Uh, but they are, you still have more available. Oh, yeah, I got more available. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I'm ever optimistic when I come up with a, with a kit design and a bill and I never sell all of them. Yeah. I still have I still have Billathon kits from two years ago. Carl said he got it working with uh, 2 to 10 2 with four blues, and it looks awesome. It looks awesome, doesn't it? I like the way that guy thinks. <laughs> I showed that uh, I was at a ham fest uh, two weeks ago uh, over in New Hampshire, and I had mine with the four blues running. Yeah. And I mean, the, even vacuum tube guys, you know, they came over and they saw it. Oh, they, yeah. it, it, it just, it's just, it's just kind of a unique thing. QRPers are quirky. Yeah. I mean, they got to be quirky. And if you're building something in a damn tuna fish can, you got to be definitely turk quirky. You can bring some so, of these. And, and, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Charlie. I was just going to say, and and uh, you did say in all of your documentation that this was uh, definitely superfluous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No one needs this, but it's cool. <laughs> What's M and G got uh, the thing? Any any reason for using the shorting power plug? Can you rewire it so we can switch from external internal by a shorting block on the plus side? Uh, sure. Yeah, or or you could have, I mean, you know, switches are expensive, okay? Uh, and so anytime I put a switch in a project, you know, it's going to add a couple more bucks to the damn thing. So, um, so and I, I definitely wanted it to be standalone because I go to HamFest all the time where I want this thing to, to work without having battery uh, cables yeah. all over the place. Yeah. So I wanted the 9-volt battery inside, um, and, you know, I didn't want to put an extra switch on there. Um, this so, is the beauty of building your own kit. Yeah, you can 
modify it however you want. Now, if you wanted to, you could drill a hole in here, put a little uh, switch, switch right and there. then switch the 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 nine yeah. volt battery ground into the ground circuit. Yeah. Fine. Okay. And and that's the other thing about Billathon kits. I never, I never, I don't attempt to build the most beautiful, perfect, you know, everything under the sun. Yeah. I always try to leave room for you to, to be able to experiment with it and play it like now. I mean, you can do different colors. Um, you can do an RGB. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so are you going to are you going to bring a bunch of these to Hamvention to sell? They're going to be there four days in May, Thursday night. People are just going to be buying them off. You're like, oh, I got to fly out of there like nobody's <laughs> business. Yeah. Now I'm going to have something even better than this. <laughs> now I'm working on a killer project uh, that uh, um, uh, is is uh, you know I've it, I've been working on it for years or thinking about it for years, and I finally. Have, have done it and I've been working all week long and I finally I put it to bed this morning around nine or ten o'clock um and uh got the board done and I gotta send them off and get a few prototypes and make sure that it actually works and if it works it is killer because that's coming up invention's coming up pretty soon so yeah it's yeah. a month and a half away yeah 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 um so yeah that's that's before you know it um uh, anybody else I mean, I mean, we're we're done building. I mean, yep. uh, and you know, all you need to do, um, you know, the hardest part is getting it back in the can with that little, with that bolt action. Mm -hmm. And you knew we have the extension, you know, because I can't, you can't get a bolt four inches long. It just doesn't yeah. work. Um, I mean, you could, but you had to pay a ton of money for it. Um, so you know, you got to make the little spacer. So I put the uh, short bolt, I bolt it down, then then put a jam nut, put the link coupling nut there, tighten it together. So it stays put. And then you now put the long bolt down there and go right into it. And, and pretty cool. Okay. Um, nice. What else we got? Anybody? Uh, yeah, people said it was fun. Fun is fine. Yeah, fun is good. Um, I mean, that's the way I like it. I mean, I, and again, I wanted to make a short thing. I didn't realize this was going to be Easter Sunday. I'm sorry. Uh, um, to me, it's just another uh, another day. Another Sunday on the another, farm. Another Sunday at the farm. Yeah. I mean, the animals have to be fed. And my wife took off. She's in, she's in Seattle. My daughter's in Vermont. So well, it's our postponed Maine Maple Sunday. So yeah. You know, we, we got snowed out last no, week. No, it's supposed to be Maple Saturday now. Yeah. It was officially yesterday. We had, oh, we had a we had a really nasty one come in and really yeah. threw us for a loop on Maple Sunday. Um, can I ask answer any more questions? I mean, uh I haven't seen any more come in. Come on, somebody's got something. Yeah. Uh, it could be totally out of the left field. <laughs> Give me a left field question. I take those. Yeah, we might have run its course with it. All right. Well, I'll give you a little hint. Okay. Here's my I told you here's that little can. Here is a receiver, a receiver board that's just a little bit bigger than this can. And it's nice and red. And I think I'm gonna redesign this board. So it fits inside this thing, and and this could be a receiver for the Tuna Tin Two, and I like it. And this kit right here is no solder. You don't need a soldering iron to build this. Uh, yeah. You just need uh, manual dexterity with your fingers, but you could build it with uh, with a soldering iron. Uh, uh, anyway, Eric, Eric Gunter asked, uh, "What's the hi any Eric? Idea, any idea of the maximum RF you can put through the the light?" Uh, I don't think I'd want to put more than 10 watts through that. You know, yeah. any, I mean, five watts is fine, I believe. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to sniff a hundred watt signal going down the line. Yeah. Uh, I think that might be a little bit much for it. Keep it QRP. Yeah, keep it QRP. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's, it's in the name. It's that, in my name, QRP you should, you should put the minimum watts you need to communicate. Your that is correct. Through, I right? mean, if you only need um, a, half a, a half a watt to uh, make your, your thing, that's where it should be. Okay. Anyway, um, I just think it's kind of cool. I wanted to do a vacuum tube circuit in a tuna can for years and years and years. But the problem is, you know, a vacuum tube, you need 160 volts to light the sucker up. Okay. And even more sometimes. And then I got a liability issue. You got a problem about making a high voltage power supply, which nobody happens to have laying around. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just, so now I just have an LED there. And I, I've stumped a lot of people going by and say, what, you know, what are you running for a heater voltage in there? This looks pretty. Uh, nine, nine volt? volt battery. 
<laughs> anyway, so that's all okay. I got. Okay, wait. Uh, no, 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 okay, no, that's we already yeah. answered that question. Yep. Okay. All right. Well. Okay. What time is it anyway? Eight thirty. Eight thirty. That's what I was hoping. An hour and a half. That's yeah. what I thought. Okay. Good. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Okay. So. All anyway. right. Well, let's wrap it up then. Um, <clears throat> this was really fun. I gotta. I gotta see how it works on the tin of tin too, but uh, we'll do that offline. And uh, everybody who joined, really appreciate you coming and and watching both on on uh, Rex's channel and on my channel. Uh, looking forward to the next one when, whenever we have that one. I don't know. It'll be, I don't know. Is it think before or after uh, Dayton? Uh, probably be after Dayton because I, yeah. I think I'm going to be pretty busy between now and yeah. Dayton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So probably uh, beginning of June, um, somewhere in that neck of the woods, I'll have something ready. I'll have it ready beforehand. But uh, yeah, I got, you know, taxes are coming up. That's the 15th. Oh, Right. Yeah. Oh my God. That's always so, a problem with me. So for those of you who are new or just kind of watching and don't know a whole lot of how this works, basically Rex will email whoever's on the distribution list that he has about two months ahead of time, maybe a month ahead of time and say, Hey, we've got a build. And then you, if you want to follow along with the build, then you need to purchase his yeah. kit, but you don't have to, you could just, you don't have you know, to. Just, you just follow but along I, and watch I, it. So. I think I saw some names in there that I don't recognize of, of uh, sending a kid out to, and I don't charge any money and there's no, there's no, uh, no fee to watch. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, I do billathons primarily to impart knowledge about building the, 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 the fine art of building stuff. It's not the thing that you're building. It's the build. It's, it's how you build it, you know, tips, the tools you need, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I try to show a little bit of everything. Probably the 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 thing that um, what did, what did we learn today? Um, I think mostly was about about the meters um, um, and a couple other things. I don't remember what. I tried so, to show a few tips. Yep. Okay. So so if you guys uh, Rex, if, if people want to be on that list or or how we, how do we announce it? I mean, really. Those who have already built a, a, a kit, they're on your list, and then you email it yeah. out. But, but if not, then I guess I could put an announcement on YouTube. Or well, I sent, I sent out I sent out a, an announcement on uh, the QRPL list, on my list, on uh, my QRPME list, you know, my my uh, IO groups list. Um, I would and, say just 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 look at just watch uh, my social media. I'll put I'll put something out once I see here from Rex. Yeah. He's, Got yeah. it going if you're interested in, in uh, buying the kit because you do have to have a little lead time. You got to, he needs, what do you need, like at least a week and a half to, to send everything out? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, I, I like to have the kit ready to go about a month before uh, because the problem is like, I, I don't know if he's there. I, I was looking at the names to find out if Andreas, he's sitting in Frankfurt, Germany. He was going to be, he was going to be tuning in for this build. Uh, that's probably, uh, he must be about two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning for, for him. Um, yeah. but no, uh, sometimes it takes, uh, uh, took him 20 days to get his kit. I, he was the first one out the door. Yeah. Um, most people I can get a kit out to in about 10 days. Um, but it takes a lot of coordination because, you know, I got to get, I got to get you on board and your time frame, Steve's time frame. Steve teaches in college. And so, you know, I need those guys, you guys, to help put this on. I can't do it by myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, you know, we got to get all those forces together. And then we got to get a project and we got to get a willing number of people to, to buy in. So, yep. And then, of course, if, you, if you're watching this on the recording after the fact, then you can, like, like was mentioned before, you can order the product if you want to build it. And then you can just follow, watch this video later yeah, on. Yeah, this after video that. will be posted tonight, later on tonight. Yeah. So, and there's a link to the to the kit in the description of this video. So, yes, okay. Um, and um, uh, I'll I'll probably change my header page on my website and uh, and and be able to zing you. Um, I mean, there's already at the top of my web page. There's a, a link to this billathon, um, but uh, and there's over on the right-hand side or left-hand side of the page up the top, there's, there's a item um, on the sidebar. Um, I can't, I can't quite see it because it's buried on the screen here, but the, the top item on the, on the left sidebar is a, a link to this billathon, the page, the kit, the instructions, the, all the documents, all that kind of stuff. So 
Uh, as I say, uh, you know, stay tuned if you're interested. If you're an observer and you're interested, stay tuned to the, either my website or um, Charlie's website, uh, or and um, and possibly um, an email list. Um, you can sign up to my QRP ME kits list or Tuna Can kits list, IO list, uh, IO group. See up there. QRP ME 2024 second billathon yeah. registration. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, long about end of April or so, there will probably be a uh, sign up to the third billathon registration for sometime early June. Okay. Sounds okay. Good. All right. All right. Well, uh, you know, thank you, everybody who was, who, who was watching the video or bought the kit and watched the video and built it. And I, I hope you're going to be happy with the kit. And it's kind of a fun little thing to build. Um, and uh, we'll see you uh, next time, hopefully. Yes. See you, everybody. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.